You said that you didn't want nothing. I don't think it matters at all. Guess you just wanna see some new Holland. Do you give it a look? Holland, do your hobbies don't have meaning? I don't think it matters at all. Two cents and a funny feeling. No flag, panic attack. Always gonna finish last. Need my warning. They'll send you home with that. I've seen it before. An official sleeping on the government's floor. Need my warning. Taken Aback by uh, the band Joy Trip, and we got Joy Trip in the studio uh, today to sit down, kind of talk about the music. They're going to be playing uh, tonight up in Golden, up at Golden Moon Speak Easy from 8 to 10. Um, welcome, guys. How you guys doing? We're doing great. We're stoked to be here. Oh, definitely. Thank you very much for stopping in. We got uh, Michael. Uh, that was Michael right there. Uh, guitar, vocals, as well as audio engineering. Um, that you do for the band, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we also have Bennett, who is drums and uh, harmonies. Yep. All right. <laughs> and uh, we have Eddie, also, who is guitar, trumpet. I love that. I love brass. Uh, keyboards and some vocals. How's it going, Eddie? It's going pretty good. <laughs> awesome. And uh, right across from me, we got Mitchell, uh, who is bass. How you doing, Mitchell? I'm doing good today. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you again very much for coming on in. We really do appreciate it. Um, so tell us a little bit about that song, Taken Aback, whoever wants to uh, jump at that one. <laughs> yeah, sure. Taken Aback is uh, one of the bigger productions we did. We had a lot of fun making that song, adding layers and, and really expanding out on that jam section. It was a really good time. Um, you know, inspired by living in the Midwest and embracing the four seasons and the cold and uh, traveling around uh 
the you know the country touring a little bit and seeing other parts and just missing home so uh yeah that's kind of where that song came from we had a lot of fun making it so where where uh where's everybody from here i know i know there's somebody from denver here who yes is that? <laughs> so the band is based out of iowa city that is our uh our, our home base however um and, and we all met in iowa city too okay um uh, but, you know, as time goes by, people move, uh, or, you know, different areas for different jobs and such. Um, so mm-hmm. Bennett moved out to Denver um, a couple of years ago, and, and Mitch moved out to Ann Arbor. So, you know, we're still making it work. We've got uh, long distance, uh, you know, techniques, uh, how we how we make this happen. But uh, it's been it's been really fun. So all of, the, all of this is done long distance, all of the recordings and writing and everything like that. Yeah. And I think actually that has led to a lot of the. Good things have come out of that, unfortunately. Kind of making the the bug the function, as it were. I don't know if that's the phrase, but um, <laughs> it makes it. I'll, I'll have to listen a lot while we're playing live. We really have to be pretty present and work really hard on our own, making sure that we know the music I and bet. communicate really well, as and be stay really organized and stay on top of things. So, with all the writing and all the recording, that could just kind of gets passed back and forth, um, ending up in Michael's hands. Uh, you guys really just. Uh, play together when you're touring playing live is that what's going on well yeah but we also um you know we we take the time to get together for various projects so whether it's a recording weekend and the guys will be over for 72 hours working on uh producing songs together and everything because we do like to track live together and and practice those songs work out those nuances together there's there's nothing like being in the room together and playing the song live to really uh hone in on what you're going for right Um, we'll also you know take times and uh do various projects like going out to southern Wisconsin and and renting a cabin in in the wilderness for a couple days to work on some songs and get some inspiration and write and record. So we definitely get together uh, to work more often uh, than just touring, but we also make time to get out here and play gigs. So nice, very nice. We, uh, where did when did you guys uh, start? So I know I know you just recently came out uh, with a song. So uh, when did you guys start with this little uh, tour that you guys are? Uh, doing right now yeah so really a lot of the playing and really the true kind of formation started probably about last january okay um that was when we played our first show together and uh not last january of 23 of 23 of 23 yeah (laughs) so i guess a little a year and a half ago time flies um but uh and so so started about a year and a half ago and since then we've been kind of cruising we had last fall we played a little midwest tour we played in minnesota in iowa in chicago um and in peoria and since then, we've kind of been working on um, the new songs and getting some new singles ready. And then last fall as well, what Michael was talking about in Southern Wisconsin, we recorded a project called Live from Lauderdale Lakes, mm-hmm. which was a short film and a album that we released of just songs from the room, how they sounded when we played them, all in one take. All in one take. All in one take. Very yeah. nice. And that's on YouTube right now called Live from Lauderdale Lakes. And hey, uh, what's your YouTube? Is it just uh, Joy Trip? Or Joy Trip Band. At Joy Trip Band, yep. Joy Trip Band. Yeah. Awesome. That that sounds fun. I mean, all one take and all. How, how'd that turn out, Michael, for uh, oh. engineering all that? You know, it's always fun to mix up something live. You get to hear every little nuance and mistake. So, right. But, you know, uh, we practiced a lot. It was, it was pretty tight. It was a good, it was a good time. Very nice, very nice. Well, uh, what would you say, um, since you guys you know, just started going around, what was probably uh, your most fun show uh, so far on this trip? On this trip, we just started this trip yesterday, so uh, yesterday was an absolute blast. Oh, yesterday blast. was the first, okay. First show of this run, yeah. Because I see, um, okay, on your website it shows uh, uh, Cedar Rapids, April, yeah. Iowa City, May, so, okay. Yeah. yeah, so fortunately, again, because we're all a little spread out, uh-huh. um, but there's nothing's going to stop us from trying to find shows, uh, <laughs> and me and Michael, uh, we try and get real creative with it, and we're inspired by a lot of different musicians who... Um, play as duos, play as solo artists, play as trios. Um, there's a lot of great music made in all those settings. Um, we've played trio shows last fall. We played shows in Peoria as a trio, the three of us. Mm-hmm. And then the past couple of shows, me and Michael have been working tri- uh, duo shows. Oh, okay. And so we'll either do a combination of two acoustic guitars, keys and guitars, and uh, I think it's a matter of pride that uh, we still try and put on a really great full show, even when it's just the two of us, still yeah, playing absolutely. for long sets, improvising. Um, engaging with the crowd and all that. But so, yeah, those past couple of shows have been duo shows, but gotcha, those gotcha. have been a lot of fun, honestly. I think uh, it's been a really great opportunity to learn how to stretch and learn how to communicate and keep that uh, train running, just the two of us. Yeah, and that being said, 
favorite show of, the, of this uh, segment <laughs> of shows so far has been Last Night at Evergreen. You know, there's nothing like playing a show in a beautiful uh, environment, surrounded by the mountains, surrounded by lakes and trees and nature, and mm-hmm. and we got a great stage out there, good people. Mm-hmm. So that that was a really good time. And but, while we can make it happen with the two of us. Playing with the drums and the bass, and specifically Ben on drums and Mitch on bass, it's that's the quite best. like it. Absolutely. Right, exactly. Well, uh, you kind of brought it up, Eddie, influences and stuff like that. So we're going to start with you. So again, you are a guitar, trumpet, uh, which uh, I love, uh, keyboards, vocals. So Eddie, one, when did you start getting into music? Have you always been into music? And then two, uh, who are your influences really personally? Um, I'm sure for all of us will say it does change all the time, which is mm-hmm. a lazy answer, but um, <laughs> I've been playing music for a long time. I grew up and played trumpet my whole life. That was what I played largely, um, and probably the past eight, ten years I've been playing a lot of guitar, and the past three or so years playing more piano. Um, a lot of it similarly has been kind of opportunistic, just the more instruments you know, the more we can play and the more we can do, um, which has been really great. And a few years ago... Uh, I started playing with Michael, trumpet, and a little bit of guitar in another band that we played in called The Grapevines. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's where that kind of started to solidify a lot more, and now we're doing a lot more guitar. Uh, in terms of influences, again, changing all the time. But there are some that I just go back to. We talked yesterday, it was Bob Dylan's birthday, especially oh, for yeah. writing. I mean, you can't go wrong with Bob Dylan and the simplicity and complexity. But also, honestly, John Mayer and... Uh, like Pine Grove, those are a bunch of great influences right now. But right. I know we all listen to a bunch of different genres, so I, I am listening to a lot of Billy Strings and Bluegrass and Molly Tuttle and like Susan Tedeschi. Nice, nice. Yeah, Billy Strings actually just recently played at Fiddler's Green right up the street. That's what we were saying. So, we uh, drove in, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys go to that or no? Okay, didn't yeah. make it. So George didn't make it, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, uh, Bob Dylan is definitely one of the king of songwriting. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely amazing. So, who really does uh, the writing of the songs for you guys, or is it a collective effort? It's really a mix. I would say uh, a lot of our early songs, Michael brought to us and said, "I want to make these songs with you guys." Mm-hmm. Um, Eddie's been writing a lot of songs as well, and. Uh, I think two songs that we have out were, were written by me. One of those is the one that we just put out uh, yesterday. Okay. Um, and that's called Slush. So, yeah, it's really it's really a mix of, of writing. Um, and Mitch writes all the bass lines. So, um, you know, yeah, we collaborate on writing. Yeah, I, I, I learned a long time ago, you don't tell a bass player what to play. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't. Um, so you wrote, you're saying you wrote Slush, the one that just came out yesterday. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about Slush. Yeah, Slush has been a long time coming. It's a song that I uh, originally started writing in 2020 when I was not seeing anybody, not doing anything. COVID, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, and anyway. it's a, it's definitely a song about loneliness and sort of a melancholy, you know, kind of happy, sad feeling, mm-hmm. kind of content in your sadness and, and loneliness. Um, and then kind of uh, looking for inspiration and looking for uh, an opportunity to go out and explore and um, adventure and uh, just yearning for those adventure days. Um so yeah, that's really the inspiration behind Slush, and uh, I'm really happy that after four years of writing the song and playing it in different iterations, uh, it's now finally out on all streaming platforms. You finalize exactly how you wanted it to sound, and it is it is a little bit slower than uh, some of your other songs. Yeah, definitely. So um, really like that. Uh, yeah, actually, thank so. you. Beautiful. So we're actually going to play Slush real quick. We're going to be right back with Joy Trip. And this one just came out yesterday, so it's available on all platforms. Here is Slush by Joy Trip. Good. 
I wait if we can make it happen. That was Joy Trip with Slush right there, uh, packing up the van and getting out, which is what they're doing right now. So they are uh, playing a little bit. They're going to be playing once again tonight at Golden Moon Speakeasy up in Golden from 8 to 11. Thanks again, guys, for coming in. We really appreciate it. Um, haven't really heard from the bass guy uh, a little <laughs> bit. So Mitchell. Um, what is, do you usually, uh, when the song's kind of all good, are you the last piece to go in there or are you the first piece in there? I mean, with our writing style, it can really depend on, uh, when they show me the songs. I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm in there right as the song is being created or it can really be like the last piece of it. And mm-hmm. so it's a cool part with bass where like with Slush that uh, you just played, Bennett sort of had the idea there, and so it's just nice laying the bass line down. It kind of, I mean, as a bass player, being a bit biased, I think it makes the song in some ways, but just, Mm -hmm. it can really depend. Like, I think it can either complement it or it can just be that foundation to really help get the song started and the ideas flowing too. I definitely believe that bass uh, really makes the song a lot. You know, you hear certain bands that don't have a bass, and you're just like, something's definitely missing here uh, right there. So uh, what influences uh, did you kind of grow up with or that you have now that uh, you look up to? That's really tough. I mean, we could, <laughs> we could sit here for hours. Where I, um, I was a big band kid in high school, and at the time I was in jazz band, I didn't think much of it, but I've circled back on that a lot, but... I really feel, I mean, as Eddie said, like, it just changes all the time. Um, I I would kind of pride myself. I feel like I listen to a lot of genres. Eddie can kind of give me a run for my money on just sending <laughs> songs back and forth. And just, um, I was, like, into metal at one point. I mean, I see you have the, uh, the dark side of the moon behind you. And oh, so yeah. a lot of prog rock, too. Um, but then circling just around to jazz and now living in michigan i've been getting more into like motown and sort of that style and i mean being a bass player i feel like it's wrong not to (laughs) kind of check that out and just start studying some of that oh motown is absolutely awesome oh it's crazy crazy music (laughs) (laughs) you guys are real have like a jazzy feel as well as kind of like a jam band type feel so you are known for playing you know three-hour shows a lot of the times so do you guys just kind of uh, get into that kind of jam band thing where you just play off of each other for a while extend the songs um do you do uh covers i mean how do you you fit the three hours in there um you know if you're not bruce springsteen or something like that that's that's a long time to play so who wants to grab that one Uh, i do think well one i think we've been building it for a long time and Truly, I know it uh, seems cliche, but we are just grateful to be able to play when we can, mm-hmm. especially being a little bit far away from each other. We're 
excited to be able to spend as many hours on stage as we can play, and over three gets a little tiring on the body. But um, <laughs> uh, we, me and Michael really started writing a lot of these songs early on, just as a duo, a couple of years ago. And actually, instead of bringing drums in first, it was the three of us, me and Michael and Mitch, playing as a trio. And so it was, uh, bringing that bass in, like you're talking about, bringing that foundation was enormous, just rhythmically, and as just kind of like a true foundation for the band. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with the jamming and playing live we do do a lot of jamming and kind of extending out but there is a lot of it holding true to the songs that i think we try and have a balance with Mm -hmm. um yeah i wouldn't necessarily say we're a jam band we're definitely influenced by a lot of jam bands mm -hmm. um so you know we we do like to open up the songs and give them space and just let it breathe and play off each other a lot right um but uh yeah, we, we've learned a lot of songs. We play some covers. Uh, but yeah, jazz and jam are all, both definitely influences. So yeah, you, I'm glad you, you noticed that in our music. Yeah, 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 definitely. And uh, it's, it's always nice to throw in a little bit of covers in there. What kind of, mm-hmm. co- what kind of covers do you guys do? Name a couple songs for us. And well, well, we, we chose them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we kind of all throw ideas out there of when we're choosing what to cover. But we'll, we'll cover Bob Dylan. We'll cover Mountain Joy. Mm-hmm. Um, We'll cover the Brook and the Bluff. We'll cover uh, Pine Grove. We we play some bar songs that people are going to want to know and yell because we're playing a lot of bars. Right. Um, right. The Wait. We play The Wait um, by the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else do we cover? We play some Bill Withers. We do, uh, mm-hmm. honestly, also, just again, we love playing. And uh, as a good challenge, we'll learn a bunch of pop songs. Um, Hosier just came out with a song called Too Sweet. Mm-hmm. And I think it was maybe a day and a half later we played that song at a show. Just it was a good challenge. Me and Michael spent about two hours working it up and making sure they sounded great. And then we played some in. Harry Styles. Yeah, we got right. a request for Taylor Swift. That might, <laughs> we might learn some of that at some point. You know. For what's worth, all our favorite uh, improvisers and musicians of the past paid mu- pop music and mm-hmm. made it their own. I think that's a huge point of pride that we can do the same. Now, when mm-hmm. you guys do these uh, cover songs, do you? Um kind of try to make it your own into your own type of groove your own sound your own style yeah definitely i don't even think we intentionally try to do that i think our sound kind of comes through just kind of naturally yeah definitely yeah Yeah, you can tell when it's michael's uh guitar riffs or his singing you know it just it comes through yeah yeah right um well bennett uh your turn now actually when it comes to influences i mean who you grew up with and um when did you start playing drums and you you sing as well too Mm -hmm. you got a microphone when you're playing okay yeah um so who are kind of your influences that you grew up with and that you listen to now yeah i uh definitely i mean you said it a lot of jam and jazz i grew up i've played drums my whole life my my brother is a professional guitar player so i i tried playing guitar for a few years and decided that i would let him stick to that <laughs> and uh you just like it. hitting things okay. just like just yeah just you know get loud <laughs> it's a natural yeah. <laughs> um so uh yeah i i'm really influenced by jazz and jam drummers i mean i love the grateful dead and i love uh fish and and even some of the up-and-coming jam bands so those are definitely influences um, and also some like almost more hip hoppy drummers. Mm-hmm. Um, Butcher Brown is a band that I've been liking a lot. Uh, Corey Fonville, their drummer is excellent. Nate Smith is another really great drummer that I look up to. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think that also you can kind of hear that in my playing. It's uh, we're a rock band, I would say for the most part. But a lot of my drum parts are almost more hip hop groove or, or or jazzy. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, those are some of my influences. And then you know we get spacey and jam too. So I like oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to a little bit. Um, so the next song that we are going to be playing is "Let Me Lay." Um, who wants to talk about that song? Yeah, I can talk about "Let Me Lay." Yeah. So uh, this this song was fun to write. Uh, some some. Goofy lyrics in there. I mean, overall, I'd say uh, <laughs> that song is a little bit about just um, the frustrations of some of the worlds around us and, and kind of the way the country's moving and everything like that. So just, um, you know, as young people, sometimes we feel like we're not always heard. So just kind of talking about that. Let, so, um, you know, the various paths that our lives have come come to and, and, and the journeys we went through. Um, but overall, it was, it was just really... Uh, Fun to make kind of a, a rhythmically interesting guitar parts and and uh, groove along to that song, I guess. And when when did uh, when did this song come out? This song came out uh, about two months ago, I believe. About two months ago. Yeah. Okay, very nice. And um, did you do most of the writing there, Michael, on this one? Yeah, I did. Uh, 
Uh, de- it definitely started off the song, but um, you know, we we call them seeds of when we get the idea for the song. We'll bring it to each other, especially Eddie and I. Uh, we live you know about two blocks apart, so uh, we'll say, hey, hey man, come over. Let's let's jam on this. Let's see where this goes. Right. Um, so we'll build it up from there, uh, and when the guys come in, get them involved until we kind of are able to morph it into what it finally ends up being awesome awesome well we're going to play the song real quick here uh joy trip let me lay on k4 seal we're sitting down with joy trip today they're going to be playing again live tonight in golden so uh definitely check them out and uh, that's going to be at golden moon speak easy here's joy trip with let me lay i uh-huh. 
joy trip right there with let me lay yeah and you uh, mentioned the uh, key solo at the end i kind of feel like i should be running around in a uh, field you know with some of colorado's finest in <laughs> right there so uh we're speaking with joy trip the band right here and their website is joytripband.com they got uh their events uh coming up on that website as well as uh, a little description of themselves and uh, some youtube links so check it out um really appreciate you guys stepping in uh coming on in so uh we are going to talk about uh the influences for mr michael uh because we talked about everybody else here um first when did you uh when did you start picking up the guitar i mean your whole life has it been recent whole life oh yeah so uh my mom had a guitar uh when i was growing up and i would just pick it up and hit things and not know how to play uh and when I was six, they my parents finally decided, you know, if he's going to be picking that thing up, let's, let's teach him how to play. Right. So, <laughs> we're, we're sick of hearing ding, ding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I started guitar lessons when I was six, and, and then oh, wow. from there it just became part of my life. You know what I mean? I, I just grew up with it. So uh, bands through middle school and high school and college, and here we are. So playing guitar my whole life. Nice, very yeah. nice. And uh, who did you listen to uh, as a kid? And I take it your parents were pretty into music as well. So yeah, uh, definitely. You had music all over the house. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, you know, growing up, when I first started playing guitar, it was all the guitar classics. I mean, it, it was the essentials of what you have to listen to and play when you're learning guitar for the first time: rock and roll, mm-hmm. ACDC, Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin, Clapton, all those classics. Um, so you know, and then as time goes by, tastes change and evolve and develop and uh, start to hear other kinds of guitars that that I, I want to learn to play. So that that's just been very exciting to to progress through and and hear how Pine Grove writes their guitar music and hear how Mount Joy writes their guitars and everything like that. So mm-hmm. um, it's always very fun to to keep learning and keep changing. How long did you take lessons uh, before you're just like, all right, I'm done. I'm going to do my own thing. Oh. I was on off for a while. You know, I started guitar lessons for like maybe three years or something, and then I, I did my own thing for a while, and I was like, I want to learn how to play drums. So I did some drum lessons, and then uh, that that music school that I was uh, going to, they were like, we're putting together this band uh, lessons. You want to do it? So I was like, sure. And that's where I, the first time I jammed with other people, really. Um, and I was playing guitar in that. So uh, just having fun learning all about music and various instruments and what what can be done with a small group of people who all know how to play something? <laughs> right. Well, I have a, I definitely have some respect uh, for you when it comes to trying the drums because yeah, I've been I played guitar my whole life and I can play two beats on the drums. Other than that, I, my hands and feet can't talk or do stuff independently. So, um, always love the drums. Our vice president uh, was a drummer, a studio drummer back in the seventies out in California. So, oh, cool. um, yeah, I, I've always respected that. So, um, you got drums drums everybody oh, else play let's drums be so. clear I cannot <laughs> drum like <laughs> well, I was going to say and a uh, credit and flowers where they're due Bennett not only drums but sings while he drums mm. and I think that might be one of the most show stopping things people love to comment and come up so it's, it's always amazed me drummers that uh, also sing as well yeah. at the same time I mean just I don't know. You must be really good to just your hands and your feet yeah. talk. You know, they just do their own thing, and then because uh-huh. just being playing guitar and focusing on oh god, I'm singing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, nuts right there. So, um, how long are you guys gonna be uh, kind of on tour playing as a band uh, right now before you kind of ch- go your separate ways and start more recording? Well, we've got a couple more days in Colorado here, so that's going to be a blast. And then um, I, th- I believe we have a, a couple shows back in the Midwest once once we're back there. Um, so that'll take us through probably early July, and then we'll be back in the in the studio coming up with some ideas and, and what we want to do for this fall. Awesome. Perfect. And yeah, it looks like tomorrow you are playing East Fax Tap in Denver. Um, so yeah, Golden Moon Speakeasy tonight, and then East Fax Tap uh, tomorrow. Um Man, that's awesome. Uh, do you guys put together uh, all your own shows and your tours and stuff like that? Or do you... Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, this guy right here. <laughs> that guy right there. Okay. Uh, how's that How's that working for you? Uh, it's, it's you know, it has its own challenges, certainly. Um, just making sure everything's... We can get to everywhere in time and getting everyone together on the right schedule. But it's really rewarding. And I know we talk about all the time that, the obviously, the end result is the, the result of all the hard work. You know, just getting to be there and play. 
um, and having people come out and getting to see people and even a couple different places. We played in Chicago in the fall mm-hmm. and we had a great guitar player, Cody Steinman, sit in with us and play. And we're mm-hmm. going to have a Colorado musician, Misty, who's from Fort Collins, come and sit in with us on Sunday. And uh, it's just fun to meet people and try and see new venues. And we're really playing a lot of these places for the first time. We've really only been playing together for less than two years mm-hmm. um, and booking gigs and stuff. So it's been a good experience, a lot of learning experiences and a lot of figuring out what we could do better. And I think that's huge for all of us is when things go wrong or even if things go great, how can we be a little bit better next time and while still celebrating how well things went? And I bet it's fun a uh, few of you guys being from Chicago to get back there and actually play your hometown. And uh, um, I can't imagine growing up in Chicago I and mean, talk about a music town, um, yeah. well, especially way back then. I don't, I'm not as sure about right now. Honestly, but, uh, yeah. we, we drove in. Uh, we still, honestly, the Chicago music scene, especially a few years ago, still now is really great. We have a bunch of musician friends still in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And the scene is really thriving. There's really some, great. Yeah, yeah. In, in high school, going to all those shows and you can meet the bands and stuff, and the, and the scene was so interesting with Twin Peaks and Whitney, mm-hmm. and, um, and and yeah, it, it was just a really good time to be able to go to those shows, and then we I moved out to Iowa, and I was like, all right, let's go see some music. <laughs> <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where is it? And, and at the same time, as, at least in Iowa City, there are some really classic great venues are, that yeah. we got to, yeah, set There is good to. music in Iowa City. <laughs> yeah, Flowers where they're due. There's, yeah, there's good that's music. Right. Awesome. Uh, well, I'm going to ask one other question, and you guys got to think about this, and uh, because I think everybody kind of has that song individually. So I'm going to start with bass player Mitchell here. Mitchell, what would you say is your favorite song of yours to play live? Ooh. I think it might even be the next one we have coming up here, Different Views. Um, It's just one of the first songs, again, when we sort of started as the trio, and then it was already fun then, and then once we were playing with Bennett, I mean, it's just... Like we'll have our little breaks when we're when we're not together, and then as soon as everything's set up, I feel like we all look at each other, and then different views will start, and it's just a high energy, fun song. Just as a bass player, it's like everything you you could want to play. Everything you could want to <laughs> yeah. do. Gotcha. All right, Michael, your turn. I'm gonna have to go with "Taken Aback" here. That first song we listened to today. Um, okay. That is just it's very fun to play. We get rhythmic with the guitar riffs together. There's various layers that build up and break down. I, I really like, uh, you know, taking the energy of the song up and down, and and ultimately to a big jam section that live we like to extend and really flush out and um, get some backups while Eddie's shredding on the guitar. We're just uh, yell and take in a back and it, it's a really good time so I have a great time playing this song I do love the background uh, harmonies taking it back taking back taking back yes. it's really it's kind of cool it's very catchy um, out there alright Bennett uh, Mr. Drummer what is your favorite I, I have to say Slush this new song that we just put out yesterday we played we debuted it yesterday at our mm-hmm. show yeah and it was received really well and uh, you might not expect it because it's slow, but we do pick it up and jam at the end and uh, just kind of end it on a high energy note and it's it's a really fun song to play live very cool. All right, Eddie. You're, you're the last up. Uh, I will say, I do think Slush has been a favorite recently to play, and similarly like the new songs, but always uh, it is a blast to play. One of our first songs we put out was called Sunflower Telephone, okay. and uh, people really connect with that. And it's also, I know, same thing. A lot of the songs grow and develop, and uh, Sunflower has a lot of cool parts that we, we've been playing for so long now that it really flows better and better almost each time instead of getting sick of it or anything like that. I love how each of you have a different song. That's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, where can people um, find all your music? Is it on all streaming platforms, all purchasing platforms? You guys really just put it out there. Mm-hmm. It's out there. Yeah. Awesome. You know, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, uh, YouTube mm-hmm. um, SoundCloud, just w- wherever you listen to music, we're there. So mm-hmm. look for Joy Trip and and you'll find you'll find our tunes right and i see a link to your youtube on your website you guys do a lot on your uh youtube there i see a few videos on there so um who kind of handles all that i kind of do video stuff okay yeah um yeah we got some uh live clips on our youtube and and uh also that live from lauderdale lakes is Mm -hmm. i think our our key our featured video on youtube yeah Um, there's even a description on it on your website that must have been a fun time such a fun time oh yeah yeah. just such a creative energy Yeah. yeah Definitely. Um, so, do you guys have any songs in the pipe that you're uh, writing? Do you guys write while you're out recording since you're with each other? Oh, yeah. Uh, just kind of get together. Always. It's like, hey, guys, let's let's jam. Let's write something out. Totally. 
Yeah, yeah we're, we're always riding. We always got seeds, you know. It, it's um, kind of the musician's curse of you come up with a, an idea for a song that you want to do and you spend a lot of time working on that, a lot of time working on that, <laughs> <laughs> and then through that process you'll come up with more ideas and maybe one that you're really excited to work on. It's like, oh, I cannot wait to really spend time on and flush this out, but... Um, you know, especially with us, we got to pick and choose what we spend our time on. So, mm-hmm. uh, looking forward to some of these upcoming ideas that we've had to to flush those out and get more tunes for this fall. There's a, a song that Michael wrote called "Oh No," and it, oh, I'm no. so excited for that one to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep an eye peeled for "Oh No." It all depends on what you're talking about when you say "Oh No." You're going to take that a lot of different ways. <laughs> and I know too, uh, to just talking about writing, and me and Michael do a lot of writing. Everyone brings in different parts. Um, but it's fun even, it does go in waves and cycles a little bit. We'll take maybe three or four songs, and because we do want to put a lot of love and work into them and mm-hmm. take time to develop them. So we'll do a big writing arc, a recording arc, and then it kind of starts again. And all that's happening usually while shows are going on. So they're developing, and I think that was part of what made Slush so great is that uh, we spent so much time playing it live before we even tried to get in the studio to recreate it. And so you already had a good feeling about it. You could feel mm-hmm. each other. Gotcha, gotcha. 100%. Tell us a little bit about um, Live from Lauderdale Lake. So this was September. Um, okay, September 2023. Um, who wants to start telling us a little bit about Live from Lauderdale Lakes? So. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody just looks at you. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, we, we were inspired by a lot of different things. Um, uh, in general, it's kind of an interesting time for music and streaming, and YouTube is changing how music comes out. But some of our favorite things are those live at KEXP videos and Pace Studios videos on YouTube, as well as um, Pine Grove did a project called Amperland, which was a long, full-shot, short film with a lot of them playing live songs. Mm -hmm. And we had a a handful of songs that were new, and I think only one of them that was on there was previously released. And we had the idea to shoot them all, and uh, a really good friend of ours, Ethan Herman, came through and helped shoot it all. It looks incredibly beautiful, honestly. I could sell the music all day, but the video is also incredibly produced. Put it on a big TV and enjoy. It's only about 20 minutes, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. And this was this was soon, kind of like after the pandemic and everything like that. So mm-hmm. uh, did you guys have a good turnout there? So it's not a live show. It's not a live show. No, I don't know if this is more intriguing or not, but uh, <laughs> it's not a live show. We actually... Um, Rented a cabin to stay at in Wisconsin. Kind okay. Of really rural, and we spent some time working on building the songs up, and then we shot it each from this room. It's called like live from the light room, kind of a thing. Okay. And so uh, it's all filmed outside. It's got a lot of natural light and got some great acoustics out there. And yeah, that was pretty much. Yeah, and we were able to get really creative with it. I mean, e- Ethan Herman. Um, Really, really talented with everything he does video-wise. He's got the 4K cameras. He's got the drone. Mm -hmm. So we've got sunset shots with the corn. We've got, um, you know, a a segment where we'll take it outside and play some acoustics around uh, just a stereo, um, you know, kind of room mic situation and and start a song that way and, you know, transition into, uh, you know, indoors again within the song. So a lot of really cool um, kind of... Story shots in there, along with just the live playing in in the sunroom during that. So yeah, we got creative with it. We had fun. Nice. Oh heck yeah! I'm, I'm definitely gonna watch that now, knowing that the story behind it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about harmonies. You guys love doing harmonies, okay? Oh, yeah. um, yes, we do. Especially since you guys kind of record, you know, separately when you guys are you know passing songs to each other, not living in the same spot. Um, how do you work in those harmonies? I mean, does one person just sing, send it on to the, and then that guy just kind of thinks about it. Okay. I can harmonize this way. Or do you guys kind of, uh, do a zoom or something like that and kind of plan this stuff out? Well, a lot of them, uh, develop naturally when we're jamming live, uh, uh, just together, you know, we're jamming in a garage yesterday to warm up for yesterday's show and, uh, we've got the PAs going so we can mess around in that situation, but also sometimes in the writing process, um, We'll hear a harmony, you know, if I'm writing a lead vocal and I'm like, ooh, this harmony could be cool, I'll send it to Bennett Mm -hmm. um, and say, take a look at this, uh, give me your thoughts. But there's also always, always room for, um, what are your ideas, too? You know, I've got these ideas for the harmonies, I think they're cool, but I think Bennett could come up with different cool ideas and and 
through that we can come up with something together and 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 finalize it there you don't get a lot of great harmonies i don't think anymore in a lot of music um because you know i mean i i grew up with you know uh, the beach boys and uh which i believe are the kings of harmony mm-hmm. i try oh, to yeah. sing along with the beach boys and i can't <laughs> so, <laughs> um but uh do uh, all yeah. on that note we played a show in peoria one time i don't know if this is what you were thinking no, but uh we uh we got two stories kind of an <laughs> underground show um like a DIY, you know, most of the bands were punk, and then we come on and we're very much not punk. <laughs> After we played, we talked to the sound guy, and he goes, that was really cool, we've never had anyone do harmonies here. <laughs> so I think you're right, a lot of songs these days just don't focus as much on harmonies as they did a few decades ago. Not as ago. much, not yeah. as much, exactly. exactly. And admittedly, difficult to do harmonies, you know, I think like I'm proud of us for when we can make them happen, but... All of us playing instruments and singing harmony at the same time, not easy. I was going to say you brought up the Beach Boys. We are talking about influences for all of us. Mm-hmm. I have to believe Beach Boys were influences for all of us. Mm-hmm. I know growing up, that was one of the first CDs that I had. Just listening to, like, Kokomo. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, what a good thing to lock into your brain early on. I know you mm-hmm. listen to so much Beach Boys. Like, oh, yeah. We all, My first uh, concert ever was the Beach Boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Very A nice. couple of the original guys, yeah. yeah. Very nice, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, absolute great band, but uh, it, they, they focused on a lot of harmonies back then mm-hmm. in the 60s, and mm-hmm. I can kind of listen to your guys' music and kind of get that little hint uh, from back then, so really love it. All right, well, uh, once again, we have been talking with Joy Trip. We got Michael on guitar, vocals, and audio engineering. And bless you, sir, uh, for audio <laughs> engineering. Um, a lot of that magic happens from the tedious work of uh, audio engineering. So we got uh, Eddie, guitar, trumpet keyboards as well as vocals. We got Bennett on the drums and harmonies, and Mitchell on the bass. Mitchell, do you sing as well? No, no. I, you leave it to them. Yeah, <laughs> I leave it to them. They do a great job with it. I just like laying it down on bass. You, you just love <laughs> slapping the bass. I love it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, uh, you guys are going to be playing tonight. I really hope you guys have a lot of fun. Uh, the Golden Moon Speak Easy, 8 to 11. And yeah, nice three hour show. So uh, that's going to be fun. And then, uh, oh, you get a break uh, tomorrow at East Fax Tap. Only two hours that you guys <laughs> I see what's going on there. Um, have you guys played uh, either of these places before? No. no. All right. Awesome. That's what I love it. And they played last night at Little Bear Saloon. So everybody uh, everybody here in Colorado who's been here for a long time definitely knows that place. Um, last uh, song that we are playing is Different Views. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Mitchell, this was your favorite. Oh, yeah. And uh, you love it because of the bass uh, on it. It really lets you just have fun. Yeah, it's just a fun song. We were talking about the jamming earlier. This is a song we could just keep looping around on it and just having fun. Uh, Last night, people are going crazy just listening to it. And so it's a fun, fun song. Awesome. And uh, who who did the, uh, who kind of contributed a lot of the vocals, a lot of the lyrics of the song? That would be me. That would be you, Michael. All right. Michael, tell us what this song is about, at least in your opinion. Uh, what the what the song is about is just everybody lives their life different, and let's embrace and love that. You know what I mean? Um, whether that is living in downtown Denver and soaking up that city life, or uh, getting out to the uh, uh, you know to the middle of nowhere where it's a little quieter and not as much going on. You know, there's there's beauty in both, and um, and I love that. So just do what you love, live your life how you want to, and and uh, let others do the same, man. I love it. I love it. Definitely. And it is quite different. I've kind of had a little bit of all worlds. So mm-hmm. I like my little suburban, you know, hole now. So <laughs> <laughs> can't put up with the city, especially with Denver right now. It's just grown so much. And you guys have been here before. So you guys even know that too. So, um, well, thank you again very much for coming in. We're going to end on uh, different views. Uh, everybody out there, it is joytripband.com. Uh, check out their stuff. They're all over any streaming platform out there or purchasing platform as well and uh, playing Golden Moon Speak Easy tonight and East Facts Tap tomorrow in Denver so thank you guys very much is there anything else you guys wanted to say before we uh, hit this last song on I think just uh, again like you were saying check us out on streaming go stream slush right now 
and uh, follow us on Instagram. And thank you again so much for having us. We're really yeah. grateful to thank be here. Thank you so much. Of course. No, thank you guys very much for coming in. We really enjoy it. All right. You've been listening to an interview with Joy Trip, and here is their song, Different Views. After that, we're going to go to our Noel programming and thank them very much for coming on in. If you can make it to the Golden Moon Speakeasy tonight or the East Facts Tap tomorrow night, come on down and they'll entertain you for hours. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.